Right, for this tutorial we're going to be doing it a little bit differently. Instead of creating it from the ground up, we're going to just pretty much step by step go through the script and explain what's going on. Because in this case it's more so just something that's a little bit tedious that you have to kind of finesse with instead of actually having much logic behind it, which there actually is a little bit, but we'll explain that as we get into it. Now, this is going to be a kill feed that all clients that are connected to the server are going to be able to see. And what it gets is I am a blue 4 unit. So as you will see in the bottom left, it prints out blue text saying this person that's on the ground was killed by me from 15 meters. Kill another one by 36 meters with his name. Kill another one. We have three total right there. Kill another one. There's four, and you will see the fourth one disappears. So we have it limited, so whenever there's more than four, I mean more than three, it pretty much goes through and will set a fade to pretty much any after the last three. Now if you play as Op4, this is going to print as red text, and I set a guy way out here for fun, at 1500 meters. Was killed from 1500.27 meters. So that's pretty much just how it's going to work, and we're going to go in step by step and go through it. And pretty much see how everything goes. So, go back. Alright, we have our little AI test units, and your situation is probably going to be actual players. So, in our script, we are using the for each command just because we are using AI to test. Now, instead of actually having to create a variable name for every AI unit, and manually doing this, I don't know, 12 or so times, we just use the for each command. But if you're just going to have players on your server that are going to be using it, you're just going to use pretty much this right here and this only. Just player at event handler and the init, player local, and that's going to be all you need. So, we're going to make an array called control list and a variable called control number. This is going to be kind of what steps through this array as well as pulls the data from the array that we do need it's for when we do like the fading and all that kind of stuff. So inside the event handler what it's doing if you remember with the killed event handler you have four different kind of things that are passed or objects that are passed. First one being the unit that was killed or that this is assigned to and the killer being, well, me, since I killed that unit, for example. So we do unit name. Well, set this actually to unit since I'm not getting the name here. So we have unit equals this select 0. And we have killer, this select 1, which is grabbing the killer. Then we're going to go ahead and get the killer side. So we're doing killer side equals side, this select 1. And we're storing it inside this array here and we're going to be passing this array with public variable server for unit killed. Now what public variable server does is it runs it pretty much activates public variable event handlers so it's like our own little event handler here. So it's called unit killed and this variable event handler is called unit killed so it's going to when the players or unit is killed it calls this to activate. So the data that we passed in being the unit, killer, and the killer side. So we're going to go and create a private variable and assign it to equal this select one, which is going to be, so right now data is equal to the unit killed array, so it's holding unit, killer, killer side. Then we're going to extract the data that we want out of it. So unit equals data select zero. 
which is going to be unit. So then it's going to go through, do the same thing for killer, killer side, just like how we did here pretty much. So then we get the unit name and the killer name. We just use the name command and it's really that simple. Then we're going to get the distance between the two. So we have the object, which is the unit that was killed, and the object killer, which is us. So we're going to use the distance command to get the distance between the two. And this is very simple. You just have object one, distance from object two, and it returns the distance. So we're going to store that in this local variable here. And we're going to create the message that we want to print back. So we go ahead and make a new local variable. And we're just going to set it to equal, use the format command. And it's going to just percent one being unit name was killed by percent two being the killer's name from percent three being the distance then meters so now that we have our message set up how we want it if we want to go ahead and use well we're going to be going into the remote remote execution command here which is going to execute this pretty much control on all clients for them to be able to see so we're going to use remote execution and we're going to use call with that. So we have remote execution, as you can see, takes in the parameters, which is all of this. Then the command name, remote execution, and then function name. In our case, it's going to be call. And as you can see, for call to work, we have arguments, call, and then the code. Now for the arguments, it's pretty much just this then the code here I don't need to do that code then call it's pretty much pretty much this is just how we're going to set it up so we have our opening and closing square bracket which is the parameters for remote execution as you can see then inside that we have the opening and closing square brackets for call, which are its arguments, and it's going to be taking in message and killer side. So message being this, killer side just being the side of the killer. Now we're using killer side to determine what color we want the text to display. So we have killer side set to equal the variable side. We go down here, we have a switch statement so switch side if the side is equal to west set the color to blue if side is equal to east set the color to red and this is an rgb so red green blue now we have control number equals control number plus one as you should recall from our init player local we're setting that to 1. We're going to go ahead and disable serialization and we're going to run a for each command. However, this for each command is not going to run on the very first kill. This is only going to be used to run when, like, this is what we're going to use to pretty much, I'm trying to think, like, when one text gets displayed and then we get another kill. Instead of those two texts overlapping in the exact same position, we're going to lower the first text downward a little bit so it kind of offsets so we have the text one then the text two then the text three if that makes sense so this is not going to run on the very first iteration so then we have if control number is greater than three we're going to fade out pretty much the last all of them from the last two. So control we have number here which equals control list which is the array and it's going to just count it so however many elements are inside of this array it's going to get that total number so let's say we have 10 displays that are passed number is going to be equal to 10. So it's pretty much going to the very end of the array which is the newest like displays that we've passed it's going to go to that very last one and it's going to subtract two so we're on 
let's say we're at element one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to be at element ten. We're going to subtract two. We're going to go to element eight. So this is going to allow, yeah, element eight. So this is going to allow us to go down to leaving the newest texts that have appeared for the kill feed in place, but it's going to cause the older ones that are there to fade away, which we have this command here. Then we're going to set that one that is selected here to fade, being true. Then we're going to wait for the time limit of that fade to be 6. So it's control commit, which is control name, control commit, the command, and then the time that it takes. So if you want to do a change, like let's say we want to take this control and move it, I don't know, to the center of the screen. And so if we set it to 0, it's going to go from the left side to the center of the screen immediately at the snap of your fingers. You're not going to be able to see it. If we set it to 2 seconds, it's going to slowly start from the left side where it was, and then over the course of two seconds, it's going to move away, move itself like this, over to the center of the screen. So that's why we have six seconds, because it takes six seconds for this control to fade completely. And this is only when, obviously, if control is greater than three. So then we just go ahead and set our display to find display. Really not 100% sure what all these are but just out of, I haven't done much reading on it, so I just kind of go with it. All I know is 46 seems to work. Other numbers do not for me. So then we're going to actually create our control. Now we are doing it, since we found our display, we're going to use that as obviously here the display. Then we have the command. Then we have the class that we want to do. We're going to do RSC text which is just a simple text box just like as you saw all it is is just literally text nothing around it all you see is the letters numbers whatever and then we have our where was it our IDC which in our case w this is what we're using control number for so we have it at zero then when this first runs it's going to set it to one and since these cannot have the same ID for when we go to do our other stuff we want to continually increment this. So this runs once. We create a control or kill feed with the IDC of one. Then it, another person gets a kill. It creates one with an IDC of two, and so on and so on. It's just going to continually create up so we get 150 kills. This control has an IDC of 150. Then we're going to set its position, which this is in the X, Y, and Z coordinates, which we're actually using this up here. So we're, so we're using the control name, which is just CTRL, control set position. This is on the X and Y. So this is what I use to get it to the bottom left corner of the screen. Then we have the width and the height. Now the width. I set it to 0 0.6 because that should fit two fairly long names if they were to kill each other inside that window. But for example, if I was to change this to 0 0.2, then go into the game. Oh, so I did make a change somewhere. Yep, that's why. So if I was to set it to 0 0.2 for the width and go ahead and get a kill, as you can see, it cuts it short. The that person's name was Kill. Then if we do it to 0 0.3, it's just slightly longer, and then slightly longer. So 0 0.6 seems to be a happy medium where it's not going to be, you know, if somebody's name is out here towards the center of the screen where my cursor is, it's not going to be way out there. However, it's only going to go pretty much as far as the person's name anyhow, so if we have just a very short stub of text that gets passed through it and we have this as heck we have the length or the width I mean as uh, 5 which would stretch almost across the entire screen 
it's only still going to appear at this little section. So it's not really bad if you have that had an excessive amount. Now then we're going to run our switch statement, which as we went over before, we have the side of the killer stored in the variable side. If they're west, then we're going to set the text to a red color, I mean a blue color. In case of east, we are going to set the text to a red color. And then we use control set text at the very last portion, which is here. So we're using this one here. So we're going by the control name, which is control. Control set text, the command, and then the text that we want to pass in being our message that we passed. So it's going to just output this person was killed by this person from X amount of meters. Then as before, we need to have a commit to commit any changes. So we want this to appear immediately. So we just set it to zero. So when this has appeared, instead of taking forever to pretty much appear, it's going to just be immediately. So if I was to set this to two, then go into the game. and get a kill. Once I pull the trigger, it should take two seconds for it to pop up. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, and it's in position. It's pretty much going off the object, I believe. That I never actually noticed. Nope, that was just going out of the center of the screen and setting itself to that position, so that's how long it's going to take to move itself there. So, Another example of that's what commit does. Now at the very last portion, we're going to alter our array here at the control list. So we're using the pushback command, which I'll just bring up here. Due to this being faster, I believe, than append, we are going to use it. So we have the array that we need being control list push back the command and then the whatever we want to push back into it and this being control number or the IDC of pretty much the control that we've created anyhow then it just runs remote execution and calls everything inside of this on every client including the server, so if you do play as a server, this should also not really have any issues and work for you just fine. I've tested on dedicated, and that's about it. But I'm going to go back over control number one more time real quick. So now that we've passed and we've added the number one into control list, another person gets a kill. I'm going to run back down here and it's going to set control number to 2 now. Now that we're going to go to... Oh, right. This just moves the let previous control down. Then if it is greater than 3, let's just say it's set to 4, it's going to go through. It's going to count the size of the control list array and it's going to get that number so let's say we're at four number is going to be equal to four so then we're just going to find the display that is on that has the IDC of four minus two so it would be IDC two and it's going to set it to fade itself over the course of six seconds using control set fade and control commit so hopefully that was somewhat clear it's a pretty just general way of doing this but this is my first time ever doing it either on request but hopefully someone finds it useful and is able to implement it uh, I will be leaving the paste code inside the description if you want to use this